There's a lot of people out there struggling with low energy. So if you're one of those people, this video may uncover some things that can really help you handle that problem and handle it efficiently. So if you're suffering from low energy, there's a really, really good chance that it's got to do with what you're eating. Um, obviously, you know, people say they eat clean, but they're still having trouble with energy. Eating clean doesn't always mean that you're giving the body what it needs to operate properly. When you're eating, what you really got to think about is are you eating something that is helpful to the body to give you what you want? People say to me often, you know, what do you like to eat? And my response is, I don't eat what I like to eat. I eat what my body likes me to eat. Because I can tell there are certain foods that I eat that make me feel good, and there's a whole slew of foods that I can eat that make me feel very poorly. And if I eat the wrong foods, my energy level goes in the toilet very quickly. So I would say the first thing that most people are not doing in terms of creating good stable energies are not eating often enough. Uh, in America especially, people tend to eat few but really big meals, which that's pretty much guaranteed to you know put a damper on your energy. Having, what I don't even like to say meals, I call it feedings. Having multiple small feedings throughout the day is going to help your body basically give you what you want, which is to have energy to have a better quality of life. So let's make an example. A big meal all at once, is like trying to put 15 gallons of gas in a 10 gallon gas tank. It can't fit. There's only so much that the body can actually use at one time. And whatever is excess, the body's got to get rid of, which actually takes energy from, the, the body's got to use energy to get rid of the excess. Not to mention if you overload the digestive tract, that puts a really big damper that bogs it down. So that's going to create low energy. From the standpoint of, let's say the body's got a 10 gallon gas tank, Really what you want to be doing is you want to you want to make sure that you're giving it a three or four small fillings at maybe a few gallons at a time. So basically you're not putting enough gas in that gas tank at once that's going to give you a spillover that's going to end up with a bunch of your gasoline on the ground. Gasoline on the ground means that your body got too much, it means that digestion's overloaded, it means problem. Basically, it means problems. So think of your think of your body as like that 10-gallon gas tank. You never want to be less than, say, three gallons, but you never want to be more than, say, seven. So you're trying to live in that middle all the time. So what that means is you got to kind of listen to the signals of your stomach. You don't want your stomach to growl because if your stomach is actually growling, like moving around, that means that, you know, it's basically really low. That's like the reserve light on your automobile turning on saying you're about to run out of gas. We don't want that. Obviously, then at the same time, we need to listen to the, the flip side signal, which is when you're eating to make sure that when the body says, hey, I've had enough, that you stop eating because eating too much, we already discussed what happens. So literally when you think about how you're eating in terms of the quantity and, and even the frequency, this is a big, big piece of the equation. So if you can get away from eating a few big meals or a big meal, like many people do, and start to take, if you took that food from that one big meal and you spread it over the day, just that alone would make a big difference, okay? Then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna really pay attention to what you're eating. You're gonna wanna try to get away from processed foods. The body is not designed to digest processed foods efficiently. So when you put processed foods in your stomach, your stomach has to work really hard to actually digest and get the nutrient value from it. What we're trying to do is put fuel in your stomach that the body can burn efficiently and it can give you energy. Not try to put stuff in your stomach that actually requires additional energy for your body to process. By doing this, you're going to be looking, you're going to be trying to focus on single ingredient foods. If you get rid of processed foods, that pretty much brings you to single ingredient foods. And if you're getting rid of processed foods, that also eliminating lots of sugars, which sugars is a blood destabilizer, which if your blood's going up and down, you're going to feel good sometimes. You're going to feel tired other times. We want blood to be stable. And the frequent feedings helps with the stability and getting rid of the sugar helps with the stability. And eating single ingredient foods, which the body can upload the nutrients, helps the stability. So again, this is just two simple elements that may help you really have a, restore your energy, but really what you're doing is you're giving yourself a better quality of life. Because when you're tired, it's, life can suck. 
I mean, when you know you got to get something done, maybe your kids want to play with you, you're supposed to do X, Y, Z, and you're tired, that's a tough place to be. Versus when you're full of energy and you've got stuff to do, it's fun. It feels good to, I mean, God, it feels good to, you know, do stupid shit, you know, mow the lawn, take out the trash, whatever it is, when you got the energy to do it. Versus when you're like, oh my God, I just, all I want to do is lay down and you got to take out the trash. That's a terrible, terrible task. So restore your energy. If you have low energy, then how do you define low energy? Uh, find yourself looking for a cup of coffee in the afternoon. Find yourself feeling like you need to take a nap, having a hard time waking up in the morning, or just feeling like you don't want to get shit done. When you're procrastinating a lot, usually that leads back to low energy. So that being said, if you're one of these people who has a difficult time with procrastination or getting shit done, probably leading back to low energy. And in this video, we talked about quite a few solutions to help you get back on the right track with getting your energy back, restoring the energy so you can have a better quality of life. If you like the information in this video or any other videos on this page, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're interested in knowing more about my coaching where I help people become the best versions of themselves, click the link below, check it out, and I will see you in the next one. Rock and roll.